Welcome back to the Jeep Jamboree video series. I'm here in the Southern California location of Rebel Off-Road. And today with me is Bond at Rebel. Ron, you own this place, don't you? This is your, your digs. This is Rebel, and we call it the Rebel Bunker, and we love when people come on down here to see us. That's great. Now, if I come to you, I'm a new Jeep owner. I've just bought my Wrangler, Rubicon Wrangler, or whatever stock Wrangler, and I want to take it to the next level. I want to go tackle the Rubicon Trail, or I want to go to Hell's Revenge and do something a little more extreme. How do I go? What questions do I need to ask myself to go from that vehicle, which is pretty capable, but to something more like this? Well, really the way, what it's gonna boil down to is how you perceive yourself using those vehicles. Those trails you guys just talked about, they're great trails, but there's a lot of other trails across the country too. So what makes sense is when we get somebody come to us, we really wanna figure out what they wanna do and how they wanna use it. And from there, start doing some modifications. Things that we wanna look at, definitely we wanna protect the bodies of the vehicle. So when you put on things like sliders, those are very important. They're gonna protect the vehicle. They're also gonna give you a step to get in and out. One of the main modifications that people are going to do straight away is really going to be wheels, tires, and suspension. And when you're looking at wheels and tires and suspension, you really need to look for where you're going to be using your vehicle or how you're going to be using it in the future, maybe a year or two from now. And that's really what's going to be key, whether you choose a mud tire, an all-terrain tire, or what size tire you're going to go with. But a lot of folks come to us, especially with the four doors, and the most common size for us down here is about a 37-inch tall tire. The Jeeps can handle it, they can be beefed up to handle it, and then you start beefing up the suspensions. The suspension, you want to give you a decent amount of lift, but not really make them too tall. A lot of people make the mistake of saying, hey, they want to put on a big lift. No, a big lift is not required. You need to put on something that's going to be functional and clear the tire you're going to run, whether it be a 35 or a 37 or something along those lines. So that's really what we're going to start with is when somebody comes into the shop and is asking our advice on how to build their vehicle. Other than that, there's also some other components. Definitely, there's some recovery equipment, especially if you're gonna be out there. And recovery equipment is a fantastic way to think of it as insurance for your vehicle. You can get unstuck. Rather than have to damage the vehicle trying to get it unstuck by bashing it back and forth, you use the recovery equipment, winches, things along those lines. You know, some of these vehicles have got some other great accessories on them, uh, such as this anchor over here that plows into the ground, and you can use it to recover yourself if there wasn't even a tree around. Other things that you look at are skid plates to go underneath the vehicles. You know, you do have some valuable drivetrain underneath there, and you really don't want to be smacking it. You got your engine, you got your transmission, you got your transfer case. And with those components underneath there, protect them very well. The gas tank, that's worth protecting as well. Now, when you guys look underneath your new vehicles, you're going to see that it looks like there's a skid plate underneath there. That's actually not a skid plate. That's just designed to hold up the gas tank. So you want to protect the gas tank and basically put together a complete skid package so that the vehicle is not going to get damaged underneath. You can damage the skid plates, but you don't the components that actually drive the vehicle getting damaged. Those now are you, the key things. Well, you have, you and I have talked about this in the past, about people who want to make some modifications and they really don't want to spend a lot. But the, the problem that you see is that people will go out and they kind of buy something that's very middle of the road. And then a year or two later, they realize it wasn't really what they wanted. So you, you and I have talked about this, about people asking the right questions about really what they're using their vehicle for. Well, quite frankly, that's one of the things that Rebel does very well, is we're going to ask a lot of questions when people are interested in doing something to their vehicles. And we try and gauge it to say, hey, build your vehicle for how it's going to perform or how you think you're going to be using it one or two years from now. You know, if you put on a cheap uh, inferior product now, you're going to be changing out once you start using it maybe in about six months. and then. The real goal behind Rebel is to try and minimize the amount of double spending that you're going to do. They are fun vehicles to modify, they do cost some money to modify, so let's put on the right components, the affordable right components at that particular time for how you perceive your vehicle being used. Yeah, do it right the first time around. Now this vehicle, what were some of the modifications made for this? This is the type of vehicle I'd want to take on like an expedition through Africa or something. You've got a roof rack you guys put on. What type of components did you put on this? Well, funny you should mention Africa because that's actually where this one's going to be shipped to. So when you're doing expedition style of vehicles, whether it be overseas or even here in the States, you want to put on some components that are really going to allow you to carry extra goodies, whether it be extra fuel, whether it be extra components. In this case, roof racks. Uh, roof rack, this is a full length roof rack. It's going to let you carry a lot more weight and you can put a good five, 600 pounds on the top of this. Not recommended for a lot of off-roading, but in long distance traveling, it might become necessary. Other things that we definitely want to look at, regardless of where you're going, are things like a roll cage or a sports cage. Some type of an interior cage that's going to protect the occupants. Because when it all comes down to it, that's what it's all about, is having fun and being safe doing it. Um, other things that we look at is usually upgrading the axles. 
because if you are traveling to remote areas, you want these vehicles to last. You want to be able to get there, have your fun with the family and other friends, and then get on back home, whenever home wherever home might be. So you do want to put on things, beef up the axles, put on some skids under the axles, perhaps even do some sleeves inside the front axles, because those are the things that are tend to are, are prone to give, uh, give problems down the road when you're off-road in remote areas. Sure, you want to be reliable equipment and you want to be prepared. Yeah, right? and yeah. Being prepared is, you know, if you go out prepared, then you're, you know, plan for the worst and then the best is bound to happen. And that's a great way to look at it when you're building your vehicle as well as the other equipment that you're going to be choosing. Well, now that we kind of have some aspects of what you need to ask yourself about preparing a vehicle, let's talk about some of the components about preparedness and being prepared for the trip. Now that we understand a little bit more about getting your vehicle prepared, this preparedness here is about inside the cabin, what you need to take with you in case you get into any situation. So these are some of the things we carry in our corporate vehicles, and I know, Bond, you carry some of the stuff as well. We just wanted to review it with you a little bit. So we carry in our, all of our vehicles this, we kind of made this orange Pelican case, and it has everything in it from the basic necessities, like a jumper cable, a fire extinguisher, flares in case we get broken down the road, uh, we have a recovery strap, first aid kit, and we even have a, a this is a spill containment unit. Uh, we've seen it on the trail before. Used Somebody pops times. an oil pan and the, the fluids get on the ground. We want to make sure we're environmentally responsible out there, so we use that to clean all of that up. We have a tool bag, something essential, and you want to make sure you carry the type of tools that your that vehicle uses. On that vehicle. It's like a star, star wrench, like <clears throat> star outfittings for the Jeep. You need those, so we carry tools. This is something we just started carrying in our vehicle. This is actually a little battery pack that you can charge your, um, your cell phone on, different equipment on, but it actually has enough power in it to jump start your vehicle, which is really nice. So we started carrying these in all of our vehicles across the country. I've actually used these myself. Yeah, and they give quite a jolt. If somebody's not behaving, you know, you know or they're not waking up in the morning from, from, from a camping experience, this is an ARB air compressor. It's a dual air compressor. Obviously, we talked about airing down with a video with Nestor. We're now we're going to talk about airing back up. You need to carry something like this when you get back on the roadways. It's essential. Communication is key. Uh, a lot of times between vehicles, we use radios, CB radios, ham radios. And actually, on the Jamborees, it's required to have the CBs, yes? It is a requirement to have CBs during Jamborees. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. But we actually carry satellite phones. Uh, they tend to be a little expensive, but at the end of the day, when you're off-roading with people, there's no better way to get out, call out for help if you need it than a satellite phone. A lot of areas we go have zero yeah, cell coverage. Zero reception. Um, and then <clears throat> kind of lastly here, again, some additional tool bags. You have gloves, which are essential for working under the vehicle, throwing rocks, grinder sometime very important. And recovery gear is essential. Particularly, we always recommend that you travel with another vehicle with you at all times. And so you can't pull yourself out with that. I've tried, it doesn't work very well. But having two vehicles, you need to have a tow strap. Otherwise, there is also a couple of other things. Some of this recovery equipment is very important and it has a place in the vehicle. Some of it belongs in the back of the vehicle, such as your tool kit, your flares, uh, things of that nature, your spill kits. Put those in the back of the vehicle. Recovery equipment does not belong in the back of the vehicle. The safest place to have this, the best place for it, is behind the passenger front seat. That way the driver, if he's stuck in the vehicle and he's at a precarious position, can reach behind that seat and pass items out to somebody outside, whether it be your winch remote or whether it be recovery straps or de-shackles, things of that nature. Because sometimes you might have the vehicle buried in the back in the mud or hanging off the side of a cliff and you don't want somebody reaching back there to try and open up that tailgate because it could make matters worse. <laughs> that's true. Well, that's some great information. Thanks so much for today. I really appreciate it. If you need any more information about modifying your vehicle or some helpful tips, you can visit rebeloffroad.com. Have fun on the trails.